Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Peng Zhe Li from Peking University, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to present our work today. Uh, by the way, I'm still on the job market. <laughs> uh, okay, so, eh? what, what happened? Oh, I, I, I can use the mouse. Yeah, thank you. Uh, here is an outline of my talk. Uh, the first part is an uh, introduction. In, in recent years, blockchain applications have, have experienced tremendous growth thanks to the new trend uh, like uh, metaverse and the smart contract platforms. The blockchain technology will become a fundamental infrastructure for the next generation of web, which is Web3. Uh, however, despite years of development effort, the blockchain still suffers from low effort. Thus, more and more uh, transactions are uh, waiting to be processed and causing congestions on the blockchain. However, scaling the blockchain is not a, a naive uh, issue because of the scalability trilemma. The scalability trilemma refers to the trade-off between three important aspects of the blockchain technology, the security, uh, scalability, and decentralization. A public blockchain can only satisfy two of the three at the same time. Among various scaling solutions, sharding stands out as a promising approach for addressing the scalability trilemma. Sharding adopts a divide and conquer approach by partitioning the blockchain into smaller segments called shards. Each shard stores a portion of the blockchain state and can be processed uh, independently and concurrently, therefore enhancing the performance of the blockchain. Next, I will introduce the motivation behind our work. Although several state-of-the-art uh, sharding solutions have been proposed, uh, a practical state sharding is still absent. This is mainly because there are many time consuming cross shard transactions and the workload bef uh, among different shards is highly imbalanced. As seen in the left figure, the ratio of the cross shard transactions is over 90%, uh, percent, and in the uh, right figure shows that the workload is highly imbalanced. The cross shard transaction hurts the, uh, the hurts, hurts the performance because it needs two separate transactions to be processed. It, uh, it means it costs a double of the amount of processing time than a regular transaction. Uh, besides, the imbalanced workload with idle uh, computation resources in different consensus nodes. We need to delve into the sharding blockchain to address this limitation to four potential solutions. So in the context of blockchain, the state can be viewed as an account. Uh, it shows the current state of an account. The placement result of the state could influence the ratio of cross shard transactions and the workload balance distribution. For, in, but for example, suppose, suppose there are 10, um, 10 states, and in the left part, we can see that there are four cross shard transactions and the workload is not, uh, in, uh, is not balanced. Uh, so, uh, but if the uh, but but if the state uh, are placed more ju judiciously, we can see that in the red part there will be no cross chart transactions and the workload is uh, balanced. Overall, the state placement is important to improve the system performance uh, of the sharding blockchain. Reinforcement learning is a, te a technique for sequential decision problems because it excels at learning optimal strategies uh, through trial and error in environments where rewards are delayed and outcomes of actions unfold over time. Uh, its focus on policy optimization and adaptability to dynamic and certain conditions make it particularly effective in those contexts. So as the block can be viewed, uh, as the block can be viewed as a sequential of uh, transactions containing many new states, the state placement result, uh, pro problem can be uh, changed into a sequential decision problem that is suitable for reinforcement learning approaches. Additionally, since, uh, since the changing characteristics of sharding blockchain uh, does not have an uh, implicit pattern as it evolves, the reinforcement learning can change them dynamically uh, capture the changes that heuristics may all fail to grasp. So this research aims to use reinforcement learning uh, to reduce the cross shard transactions while keep workload balance. Uh, so the reinforcement learning is to learn the state of the environment to take action. But what should the agent observe in a sharding blockchain environment? Based on the blockchain transaction data pattern analysis, we found that the transaction data is rich in the spatial and temporal characteristics. The temporal characteristics uh, indicate the distribution of the transaction of the several past blocks. The number of the cross shard transactions and the total uh, number of cro shard cross trans transactions in the past uh, several blocks can be viewed as a sliding window. Uh, since the blockchain has time sequence, what happened? 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, for special characteristics, there could be many senders to the same receiver, which is a. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, get back to the sliding window part. Uh, the, the transaction distribution in the several past box can be uh, viewed as a sliding window. So the data in this sliding window can be adopted as temporal characteristics. So for the spatial, tem uh, uh, spatial characteristics, there could be many senders to the same receiver, uh, to the same, uh, which is, a tr which is uh, which is a new state to be allocated. The location uh, distribution of the uh, addresses or the senders that have uh, already been placed can be viewed as the spatial uh, characteristics of the transactions. So uh, combined with the spatial uh, and the temporal characteristics of the transaction data, uh, the agent uh, processes the transactions in the latest block and make placement decisions for the new states. Uh, although several state-of-the-art uh, sharding solutions have been proposed, a practical state sharding solution is still absent. Currently, research, research on reinforced machine learning-based sharding blockchain is still in its early stages. Uh, they have improper uh, state and action designs, or they are, uh, have, uh, <coughs> or in its, uh, which cannot uh, solve these two limits. For instance, the block size, number of shards, and cross-block uh, intervals are consensus-related parameters. Usually, they are determined before launching the blockchain. So frequently changing those parameters will impact the security of the blockchain. Moreover, they view all shards as the same. Consequently, they cannot solve the state placement uh, problem. So uh, to reduce cross-shard transactions while keeping workload balance, uh, we propose state placement based on deep reinforcement learning, which is also named uh, as Spring. So in the blockchain that enabled uh, Spring, we call it Spring Chain. As many sharding blockchains have established, uh, Spring Chain consists of two types of shards, the A shard and the T shard. The A shard refers to the, uh, the T shard refers to the transaction shard, which concurrently verifies and processing uh, transactions, uh, where the A shard refers to the agent shard, which receives the user transaction re requests and decides which T shard the transaction should be sent to. Uh, the deep reinforcement learning training and, uh, and inferencing occurs in the cons consensus node of the A shard. So this, is, this figure shows the workflow of the uh, spring. In each consensus round, the leader in the A shard select uh, transactions from its transaction mem pool uh, in the form of, uh, and it produced the state placement result in the form of key batches. After reaching a consensus on the placement result, uh, the batches are sent to the corresponding T shards, uh, as shown here. Uh, sorry. The T shards, uh, the T shards verify and execute the transactions. Only valid transactions are included in the block. So additionally, the uh, new addresses corresponding to the new state uh, and the number of cross shard transactions are recorded in the new block. Finally, by observing the new blocks uh, of the T shards, the consensus node in the A shard will uh, record and observe the location of the new state and the, the number of the transactions. So. Uh, after that, the A shard will train and update its model with the policy optimization, a proximal policy optimization algorithm. So the training and inferencing process uh, happens in the consensus round. So uh, in the pre, we modify the uh, PPFT to create a, a consensus algorithm to accomplish this process. The training and the inferencing uh, in the prepare phase, the proposed block includes the state of the T shards uh, uh, that the leader observes in the block header and the placement result based on the uh, blocked body. So in the following prepare phase, the receiver will verify, uh, verify the action uh, the, or the decision made by the leader by creating their own action with their local views of the state. Finally, in the commit phase, if more than two thirds of the, trans of the uh, consensus node votes for the proposed block, the final placement result uh, and update of the model will be finalized. So finally comes the, the finally comes, sorry. It's not responding. It's, it's not responding. So. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. Finally comes the evaluation part. So unlike current deep reinforcement learning-based solutions, the block size in Spring 
is not adjustable to avoid potential security issues. However, the block size is not set arbitrarily. In this experiment, we investigate the impact of different block sizes on the cross shard transaction ratio. We found that the block size can be viewed as the timing window that represents the spatial and temporal uh, characteristics, uh, characteristics within the uh, N sub T transactions. If the N sub T is too large, uh, the spatial temporal characteristics might have been changed significantly within these blocks. Uh, conversely, a too, small, uh, a too small N sub T like 100 to 500 may not contain enough spatial temporal information for effective state placement. These three figures illustrate the cross-shot transaction ratio using different state placement algorithms. For all algorithms, except Spring and Sketching, the cross-shot transaction ratio is at around 94% in all periods, showing the effectiveness of the deep reinforcement learning. Uh, moreover, Spring is significantly outperforms all other baselines in all periods. As Spring takes advantage of the spatial temporal characteristics of the transaction data, it can make more judicious state placement decisions. The throughput is the number uh, of transactions the sharding blockchain can be processed per second. Uh, we collect the transaction per second by block emulator and modify the state placement mo module of the block emulator to verify the effectiveness of our uh, spring, spring. As shown in the table, the transaction per second is proved uh, to up to 36%. These two figures take a deeper view into the training process. Uh, they show that Spring outperforms all business in most training steps. Uh, and uh, this is because the change in the spatial temporal characteristics of the transaction data as the blockchain evolves. Overall, Spring process good adaptability in all periods. So thank you for your listening and I welcome any question you may have. Thank you.